a black man is walking alone on a deserted road, when suddenly an unknown man attacks him, that unknown man knocks the black man unconscious, and puts him in the trunk of his car, after which, he takes her away from here. After this, we see a boy named Chris, who is a photographer, we also see Chris's girlfriend here, whose name is Rose. Chris is very nervous today, because today he is going to meet Rose's family for the first time, and Rose has not yet told her family, that her boyfriend is a black. But when Rose sees Chris nervous, she tells him not to worry, because my family doesn't care about anyone's color or caste, that's why you can meet my family without fear. So now Chris also agrees to meet him. On the weekend, Chris goes with Rose to visit her family. On the way, Chris calls one of his best friends, Rod, who is an officer. Chris tells him, that he is going to his girlfriend Rose's house to meet her family, and that it may take a while until he arrives, so until he gets back home, Rod has to take care of his dog. Hearing this, Rod says that it is okay that you come comfortably, after going some distance, suddenly a deer collides with his car, due to which he stops his car. After a while, a police officer comes here, the officer asks Chris for his license, Rose gets angry with the officer, because she was driving, but the officer was asking Chris for the license only, because he is black. Rose starts arguing with the officer, after which the officer lets them go. After some time Rose reaches her home. Here we see Rose's father Dean, and her mother Missy. Dean is a neurosurgeon and Missy is a psychiatrist. Both happily welcome Chris to their home, from which we come to know, that they have no problem with black people. But their happiness is much more, which seems very strange to see. After this, Dean takes Chris around his whole house. Here Dean shows Chris a photo of his father and says, that my father was a runner, and he participated in the 1936 Olympics, but sadly this is that my father could not win that race, because a black man won that race. During the tour, Chris sees Dean's gardener Walter and housemaid Georgina, they were both black. Dean tells Chris, that they were both hired to look after Rose's grandfather and grandmother, but they are now dead, so they both work here now, because she is like part of their family. While drinking tea Chris tells, that when he was child his mother was killed in a car accident. Chris is here waving his hands, seeing which, Missy understands that Chris is addicted to cigarette smoking, so Missy tells Chris if I want, I can hypnotize you and get rid of this addiction, but Chris flatly refuses to do so. At night, when everyone was having dinner, we see Rose's brother Jeremy here, Jeremy starts asking some strange questions to Chris, and he goes to Chris and challenges him to a fight. But Missy tells Jeremy to go back to his place and sit. Rose apologizes to Chris for her brother's behavior. Chris says that it's okay. At night, Chris can't sleep so he comes outside to smoke a cigarette. Then he sees Walter in front of him, who is running fast towards him. And as soon as he comes to Chris, he turns, and goes the other way. Then Chris's eyes fall on Georgina and he sees, that Georgina is looking at her face very strangely in the mirror. Seeing all this, Chris does not understand anything here, that what is happening after all. Chris now comes back inside the house, then Missy calls him to her, and talks to him. Missy had a cup and spoon in her hand, which she was turning again and again. Missy asks Chris about her mother's death. Chris didn't want to talk about it, but still he starts telling Missy everything. Chris doesn't know anything here, and Missy hypnotizes him with just the sound of a spoon, and sends Chris to the sunken place. Now in this state, Chris loses complete control of his body, and becomes paralyzed, he was able to hear Missy's voice and see her, but he himself could not speak or move. Missy closes her eyes here, then suddenly Chris's eyes open, and he finds himself in the bedroom, Chris thinks, maybe he was dreaming. In the morning, Chris sees Georgina again, who looking at herself in the mirror. After this, he meets Walter, Walter is here talking in a very strange way, that looks like he is an old man, but Walter is very young. Here Walter asks Chris how was your therapy session with Missy last night. Hearing this, Chris realizes here, that in the morning he had not seen any dream, rather all those things had happened to him in reality. After this, Chris goes to Rose and says, that I feel like your mother hypnotized me last night, because now I am not able to smoke cigarettes, and I am vomiting when I think about cigarettes. But Rose says, that there is nothing like this, it is just your illusion. Today there is a party in Rose's house. In this party Dean had invited many rich old people, and all the people who came here were white. Chris was feeling very strange among so many white people, and those people were also asking him strange questions. Most of the people who come here, ask Chris about his body. In this party, Chris sees a black man like himself. When Chris talks to him, the man tells his name is Logan. Logan was very young, but his behavior was like an old man, and his way of talking was just like white people. Here we see Logan's wife who was white, and she was about 30 years older than Logan. At the party, Chris meets a man named Jim Hudson, who is the owner of an art gallery. Jim praises the photographs taken by Chris. Jim says that he also wanted to become a photographer, but due to genetic diseases he went blind. After talking to Jim, Chris goes to his room. Chris whizzes past a lot of people here, and as soon as Chris goes to his room, all these people stop talking, 
seeing which it seemed as if, that they were talking to each other just to show Chris. Coming to the room, Chris sees that someone has removed his mobile from the charging cable. Chris thinks that Georgina, the housekeeper, may have done this work. That's why he tells Rose, that I think Georgina pulled my phone out of charging, because she doesn't like me at all, and she always looks at me strangely. But Rose says, that Georgina is such a good housemaid, why would she do that? Chris is very upset here so he calls his friend Rod. Chris tells him how he was hypnotized last night, and how the black people around here behave like old people. Hearing this, Rod quickly tells Chris to leave the place, because he thinks, maybe those white people will hypnotize Chris, and make him their slave. Both of them were talking when, Georgina comes in this room, seeing which Chris gets scared. Georgina apologizes to Chris and says, that I accidentally pulled out the charging cable of your phone. Hearing this, Chris says that no problem, there are many white people around me, so I'm having a little trouble here. Listening to this, Georgina laughs and says that you should not be upset, because all those people love you. Chris sees, that even though Georgina was laughing, but tears were coming out of her eyes, it seemed that she wanted to say something to Chris, but even if she wanted to, she could not do so. After a while, everyone asks Chris some questions about black people, on hearing this Chris says, that Logan will answer all these things, and while Logan is answering this, then Chris sneakily tries to take a picture of him, because he had a feeling like he's seen Logan somewhere before. While clicking the photo, as soon as the phone's flashlight is on, Logan sees it, seeing the flashlight, Logan suddenly stops, and his nose starts bleeding. Logan suddenly starts fighting with Chris, and tells him only one thing over and over again, that you leave here. Everyone quickly grabs Logan, and Missy goes into a room with Logan. Seeing all these things, Chris understands that something is definitely wrong here. After some time, Missy brings Logan out of her therapy room, Missy tells, that Logan has had a small attack, but now he is absolutely fine. Logan apologizes to Chris here, and then leaves from here. After this, Rose comes to a lake with Chris. Chris tells her here that I do not feel good here, I feel as if I have seen Logan somewhere. Chris asks to go back home from here, and Rose agrees to him, and they decide to return tomorrow morning. On the other side, we see those white people, who were sitting in a silent auction, here we see a photo of Chris. Actually, Dean was selling Chris here, and all the white people had come here only to buy him. Jim Hudson who was a blind man, buys Chris at very expensive prices. At night, when Rose and Chris return home, by then all the guests had left, Chris is sitting alone in Rose's room, and sends Logan's photo to his friend Rod. Rod calls Chris and tells him, that this man's name is not Logan, rather Andre Hayworth, and they both met her at a party. Actually, Andre is the same guy, we saw getting kidnapped at the beginning of the movie, and he's been missing for six months. While talking, Chris's phone goes off because the phone's battery was dead, Rose comes into the room, Chris tells her that we have to leave now, so Rose goes to pack. Chris sees Rose's wardrobe open here. When Chris checks it, he finds a box inside, which had many photos of Rose, and in each photo Rose was with a different man, and all of them were black. Chris also sees the gardener Walter and the housemaid Georgina, who are with Rose in the photo. Chris does not understand all these things, because Rose told him that she had never met a black man before Chris. Now knowing all this, Chris starts leaving from here quickly, but Jeremy was standing there blocking the door, then here Dean and Missy also start blocking his way. Chris shouts and asks for the car keys from Rose, but Rose says, that I have the keys, but I will not give them to you. Hearing this, Chris tries to run away from here, but Jeremy catches him. Just then Missy rings her spoon three times against the cup, hearing the sound of which, Chris becomes hypnotized, and falls down unconscious. We see Chris again in sunken place, Dean carries Chris's body into a room. Next morning, we see Rod who is repeatedly calling Chris, but Chris's phone is switched off. Rod tells his senior black officers about Chris, how some white people brainwashed his friend have made him their slave, but the officers don't believe Rod at all. Next, we see Chris and just as he regains consciousness, he finds himself in a separate room, where he's been strapped to a chair. In front of Chris there was an old TV, in which a video is playing. In this video we see Rose's grandfather named Roman. Roman used to be a neurosurgeon, and after many years of hard work, he had discovered such a method, in which way he can transplant the brain of any human being, into the body of another human being, he named this procedure coagula. After this, the sound of the same cup and spoon is heard on TV, hearing which Chris becomes paralyzed, and goes to sunken place. The next day, Chris sees Jim on TV, Jim is the same man, who bought Chris that day for a lot of money. Jim tells Chris here, I have come here to clear all your doubts, so that our procedure can be done well. So friends, now let us tell you what is going on here. Actually, Rose's grandfather Roman had invented a new way of doing brain transplant, so that whenever the white rich people get old, then they can become young again by putting their brain in another man's body. To do this work, the victim is first hypnotized, and sent to the sunken place, due to which, the person loses complete control over his body. After which Dean performs surgery, and puts his rich client's brain inside that victim, 
so that rich client gets a new body, and the real person of that body, gets imprisoned in sunken place forever, and if that person ever comes out of sunken place, Missy hypnotizes him, and sends him back to sunken place. The same has been done with Logan, Walter, Georgina, and the brain of some old man has been inserted inside them, due to which, the behavior of those people was very strange, and now Jim is also going to get Chris's body, knowing all these things, Chris feels very bad. Chris was watching all these things on TV, only then he sees the sofa on which he is sitting, cotton was coming out from inside that sofa, then again the same cup and spoon comes on TV, hearing the sound of which, Chris faints. Next, we see Dean who getting ready to perform surgery, and now Jeremy comes into the room, to get Chris. Jeremy opens Chris's rope and starts looking back, then suddenly Chris wakes up and attacks Jeremy, he beats him unconscious here. Here we learn, that Chris had put cotton wool from the sofa in his ears due to which, he could not hear the sound of the cup and spoon, and he was just pretending to faint. Meanwhile, when Dean comes out looking for Jeremy, Chris suddenly attacks him, and kills Dean by inserting an antler. When Chris was going out, he sees Missy here, Missy quickly tries to pick up her spoon and bowl, but before that, Chris drops them and breaks them. Missy attacks him with a screwdriver, but Chris drives the same screwdriver into Missy's head, and killing her. Chris was about to go out of the house, when Jeremy attacks him from behind. Jeremy wanted to kill Chris, but Chris freed himself somehow, and killed Jeremy by attacking him several times on the head. On the other hand, we see Rose sitting in her room, and she's out here on the internet looking for her next victim. Outside, Chris was running away with Jeremy's car, then suddenly Georgina collides with his car. Now Chris takes pity on Georgina, and makes her sit in the car and starts leaving from here. Only after going some distance, Georgina regains consciousness, and she shouts to Chris, that you killed my whole family. Actually, Georgina was saying this because the brain of Rose's grandmother was transferred in her body, so she is now Rose's grandmother. Here she starts fighting with Chris, due to which their car collides with a tree, and their accident it happens. In this accident Georgina, means that Rose's grandmother is killed here, but Chris only gets some injuries and survives, then Rose comes here and she starts firing at Chris. Then Walter comes running here, inside which is the brain of Rose's grandfather, he was about to strangle Chris to death, when Chris turns on the flashlight of his phone, seeing which Walter becomes completely calm. Walter goes to Rose and takes her gun and shoots her, then kills himself with the same gun. Actually, the real Walter's mind was overpowered by Rose's grandfather when the flashlight was on, so Walter intentionally shoots himself to be free of all this. Now all those people were dead, but Rose was still alive, she tries to take the gun, but Chris strangles her to death, and then a police car comes here, from inside which Rod comes out, Rod takes Chris from here, and he leaves Rose to die there, shortly after which Rose dies.